Hi, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching Scaling View with Nuxt. In this first lesson, we're going to be creating our first Nuxt app. We'll create our first project together. We'll take a look at the folder structure that Nuxt generates for us, and then we'll start building out our example app. Going into this course, I'm assuming that you know the view basics, including view router and view X. If you aren't familiar with these, you can jump into our previous courses, take our real world view course, take our view X course and our next level view course, then come back here. <laughs> so obviously I'm assuming that you're familiar and comfortable with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Given that, let's get to it. To create our first Nuxt app, we need to make sure that we have NPM greater than 5.2.0. This allows us to run NPX create Nuxt app and then our project name. This will fetch and run the latest create Nuxt app generator to create our Nuxt app. It will ask us for the options we want to use with our Nuxt app. It'll initialize a Git repo for us. And then finally, this command will run npm install to fetch all the dependencies we need. If you prefer yarn over npm, that's perfectly fine. You'll want to run this command. Okay, we're about to start coding. And I really believe the best way to learn is by doing. So I highly recommend that you fire up your code editor and your terminal for this command and follow along with us. So in our terminal, we're going to go ahead and run npx create nuxt app. And then our app name is real world nuxt. We're asked for our project name. I'm just going to hit enter. Our project description. If we want to configure a custom server framework to use, I'm going to select none. And then which features to install. And I just use the arrow keys and spacebar to select them. And then enter when I'm done. Next, I'm not going to select a UI framework or a test framework. I'm going to choose the universal rendering mode. And we'll go into what exactly that means in the next lesson. I'm the author. And I'll choose NPM as the package manager. It's going to create a Git repo for us and run npm install. <laughs> and then bring us back to the command line. And then tell us what we need to get started. I'll follow the directions, cd into the directory, and run npm run dev. This compiles all of our code. And tells us that our development server is on localhost port 3000. Jumping into our browser, if I hit a refresh, we can see that our Nuxt app is running. I'm going to go ahead and add this generated project to GitHub and just show you what that looks like, because I think you should do this too. So I've already populated the fields. I'll hit Create Repository. And here, since it already created a new git repo for me, I need to copy this git remote add origin command. We'll need to use that in a moment. Once again, I want to encourage you to follow along with this course because it's nice to have a Nuxt app you can play around with, just explore the different commands, try new things, and maybe even create a portfolio project so you can show people that you know how to create a Nuxt app. Back on the command line, I'm going to add everything into a git commit. Then I'll paste in that remote add origin line. And now I can push up my first commit to the master branch. Back in my browser, if I refresh the page, I can verify that indeed my Nuxt app is stored on GitHub. When we create a new view application, it comes with a source directory and a components directory. But that's it, just one small components directory, which begs a few questions. Where do you put all your components? Do they all go into this directory? Do you create a views directory for your top level components? And where do your layouts go? You know, the ones that have router view in them? Nuxt answers all these questions for you with intelligent defaults. The first thing to know about the Nuxt component folder structure is that there's no source directory. All the folders are in root. Components contains our reusable view components, a layouts directory, which contains our layouts, like, for example, a blog layout or a store layout or a home layout, 
and a pages directory that contains our top level views, always in .view files. These components in our pages directory are used to generate our routes, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. I also want to mention that Nuxt gives these components additional functionality based on which directory we put them in, which becomes really useful, and you'll see why in the next few lessons. If we look in these folders that were just generated for us, we'll see that layouts has a default dot view. This is our default layout. In our pages directory, we have an index dot view, which gets rendered inside of the default layout. Then our components directory has the Nuxt logo, and that gets rendered in the middle of the page. And don't worry, in the rest of this lesson, we'll explore the functionality of these different components. So those are the three folders where we put our .view components. Then we have the store directory, which is where we put our UX store files. A static directory, where we put files that we want to serve exactly as they are from the root. The example would be the robots.txt. If you're familiar with SEO, you want one of these. Or the favicon that appears next to your title. Then there's the assets folder, where you put your uncompiled assets, things that need to be compiled when you deploy to production, such as your stylus files, your SAS files, images, or fonts. Let me show you an example of what happens to images you put in the assets directory. If I put my logo.png in this directory, inside the index.view in my pages directory, to include this image, I would write tilde assets logo.png. Nuxt, by default, will be using view loader, file loader, and URL loader for effective asset serving. What this means is, when we build our project, if the image file is greater than one kilobyte, the URL to access this image will look something like this. In case you're wondering what that hash code is, that 82F7965.png is, it's basically a version hash. This is useful if I ever create a new version of logo.png. When I go to deploy it, if the file size has changed, if it's changed even slightly, it's going to have a different version hash, which means when people load up my website for the second time, since that logo changed, it'll load the new logo and not the old one. Otherwise, if logo.png changed, but the name remained the same, then the browsers that already have that image cached aren't going to load the new one. On build, if the image is less than one kilobyte, it's going to inline the image. It'll look something like this, with a big, long image hash. It does this to reduce inline image requests, because it doesn't have to go fetch the image. It's going to be right there inline in the HTML. Next in the Nux folder structure, we have the plugins folder. Here we put JavaScript plugins to load before starting the view app, like external JavaScript helpers or libraries. Then we have the middleware folder for custom functions to run before rendering a layout or a page. And lastly, we have the nux.config.js, which we can use to modify the default Nuxt configuration. As you can see, Nuxt has a bunch of intelligent defaults, but the great part about it is you can modify all of them when you need to inside the nux.config.js file. In a minute, we're going to create our first pages in our example app. Inside the pages directory, we'll create the index.view, that'll have our event list, and our create.view, which will allow us to create an event. After we create these pages, do we need to create a router.js? The answer here with Nuxt is nope, because it's going to auto-generate the routes for us. This file that we're used to writing when we're using view router, we don't have to write anymore. By default, Nuxt is just going to work, mapping these pages to those routes. We're going to do a bunch of things in the example app, and let me walk you through them before you actually see it in the code. Firstly, we're going to fix some settings in VS Code. See, if you followed along our tutorials and you have your editor configured like mine, you're going to run into a conflict unless you tweak something inside Vter. If you're not using VS Code in Vter, don't worry about it. Next, we're going to take a look at the default layout and copy-paste in some global styles. Then we'll simplify our index.view file, start up our development server, make sure everything works. We'll then create a second page, our create.view. Then we'll create a new component for navigation, our navbar. And finally, we'll use our navbar component inside of our layout. So first, let's fix that conflict in Vter. So here in VS Code, I'm going to go up to Preferences and Settings. 
Inside of that, I'm going to click on Extensions and scroll down to find Vitor. Inside of this, I'm looking for the default formatter HTML. I'm going to set that to None. We'll allow our ESLint to do our HTML formatting. Next, we're going to add some styles in the default layout. So I go into the default.view file. Inside of here, you see this Nuxt component. This is where page templates are going to get rendered. This is kind of like router view from the view router library. Next, I'm going to add an ID to work with our styles. I will delete all the existing styles and I'm going to paste in some different ones. If you want to copy and paste these in into your own project, you can just look down below in our lesson text. It's all there ready for you to copy and paste. Next, we're going to simplify our index.view file inside of the pages directory. So let's go ahead and open that up. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything and start from scratch. We want this file to be real simple. We'll simply add a template and an h1 that has the title of events. Next, let's make sure everything's working by starting up our development server and testing it out. We'll run npm run dev. It'll compile everything. It'll take a little longer for you. I sped this up. So in our browser, we can see that it's properly loading our event title. Great. Now back in our editor, let's create a new page. So I'm just going to copy our index page and create a new page called create.view. I will paste in our simple template and just change the title to create an event. If I jump back into the browser at this point and go to slash create, we can see that I can navigate to that page without editing a routes file. Because remember, Nuxt is generating our routes based on the file name. We made a create.view file inside of our pages directory, and because of that, we can navigate to slash create and it will load up that page inside of our default layout. Next, let's create a new component for our navigation bar. So first, we'll go into our components directory, and we need to delete that logo.view. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And we'll create a new file inside of our components directory called navbar.view. This is going to have a simple template. It'll have a div with the class of nav. And inside here, we're going to create some links. With Nuxt, we use Nuxt link instead of router link. And we specify the route it navigates to using the to attribute. Here, our title will link to the root route. Next, we'll add a navigation tag. And inside of there, there's going to be two links to each of our pages. So we'll just copy and paste our Nux links. They're not going to have class of brand. The first one is going to have the text list. And the second one, which links to create, will have the nav text of create. And it'll have a separator between the two. Lastly, I'm going to paste in some styles, which you can get on the page below this video. Finally, we need to edit our default layout to use the navbar component. So jumping back into our default layout, we need to add a script tag and import the component that we just created, navbar. Inside of our export default, we'll add this component. And now we can use it inside of our template. Now in our browser, our create link goes to our create page, and our list link goes to our index.view. Clicking on the title also navigates to our index.view. To review, in this lesson, we learned how to create and run our first Nux project. We looked at the folder structure that Nux generates for us, 
And lastly, we built out our example app. In the next lesson, I get to show you some of the great SEO features that Nuxt comes built in with, as well as attempt to explain to you exactly what universal means, which I have to admit, I only understood recently. <laughs> so it'll be fun. Thanks for watching. In our next lesson, we'll start to get into the cool, SE, cool, the really cool, cool. Why am I saying he's cool? In our, <laughs> in our next lesson, we'll check out the badass SEO features of Nux and figure out what universal means. It'll blow your mind. Not professional. Keeping it professional. Because that's just how we roll. Uh,